and it's time for Bodhi Plots. Bodhi Plots are named after an American engineer, Hendrik Wade Bodhi. And essentially a Bodhi Plot is two plots and one, which is a magnitude plot and a phase plot. Typically we would use these on things like amplifiers. Okay, so we've got a magnitude plot and a phase plot, but it's more than just that. When we plot, we plot with a decibel gain for magnitude and the frequency axis most of the time frequency axis is going to be logarithmic. So if we were to draw this very quick like here Here's our frequency. Now as a log scale, what we're saying is that identical distances create identical ratios. In other words, instead of saying, you know, one block, one centimeter is one kilohertz or five kilohertz, or whatever the heck we choose, it becomes a ratio. So in other words, a centimeter is a factor of two or a factor of five. So we find that this sort of compresses the frequency axis a little bit. And we'll find that these things are chopped up in terms of decades. So as a, a quick example here, I'm just going to put some decades on here. All right. So this might be one kilohertz. And that's 10 kilohertz, and this is 100 kilohertz, right? See how we're going up by factors of 10? If I had another one, a megahertz. If I went down, right, it would be 100 hertz and 10 hertz. So there's really no zero, right? There's really no zero hertz DC. Works up like this. So where are the intermediate values? You know, where is 5K on here? Or where is 2K? Well, a fa any factor of 2 would have to be the same distance. So the log of 2 is about 0.3. In other words, we need to be about 30% over. Somewhere you know, around here would be 2K. And if we took that same spread and we replicated it, we'd be at 4K and then at 8K. So 8K is going to be like way the heck over here. And then if I took that spacing, right, which eh, is not an even number, but whatever, um, and I went backwards, Right? It would be half of 10. That would be 5K over here. But here's the important thing. If that's 2K, right, 1K to 2K, if that's a factor of 2, then that same distance would give me 20K over here. And that same distance would give me 200K over here. All right? Okay, so that's, first of all, how the frequency axis is laid out. And here we have decibels. Typically, this would be 0 dB. This would be positive dB, and then as we went down, right, we'd have negative dB. Now, for the phase part of this, we have the same kind of logarithmic frequency axis, and the phase would just normally be in degrees, right? We'd have positive degrees, negative degrees, and off we would go. Okay, so let's start by looking at the two most simple things that we have. Um, lag networks and lead networks. So I'm going to start off with a little lag network. So a lag network is nothing more in the simplest case as a resistor and a capacitor. Now as we go up in frequency, X sub C gets smaller and smaller and smaller, right? Uh, X sub C is 1 over 2 pi FC, so it's inversely proportional to frequency. Well, you can think of this as a little frequency-dependent voltage divider. If you think of that as your output voltage and your source is your input voltage, then the gain is V out over V. In other words, it's the drop on the cap over the source. So as a voltage divider, because X sub C keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, V out gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Now, 
if you were to do a real quick sketch of this, here's frequency. If we take the input as the reference, that's 0 dB, as we would go up in frequency, at some point we would see this thing start to drop off. At very, very low frequencies, X sub C is much bigger than R, so we get virtually all of the input at the output. Then at the critical frequency, right, remember the critical frequency is where X sub C magnitude equals R, and you'll be down at 0 0.707 of whatever your input is. That turns out to be a three decibel drop. So there's your critical frequency, right? That's down three dB right there. And then it just continues to drop down. The higher the frequency is, the smaller X sub C is, and the less and less signal we get. If we do this on decibels, this axis, and a logarithmic frequency axis, this turns into a straight line. How convenient. It's easy to sketch. The slope of this line is 20 dB falling per decade. So a decade is a factor of 2, excuse me, a factor of 10 in frequency. We can also say it's negative 6 dB per octave. Octaves are factors of 2. That's a term borrowed from music, a factor of 2, do to do, do re mi fa so la ti do. Right? That's a factor of 2 in frequency. So either way, either way you want to say that, 20 dB per decade or 6 dB per octave, that's what the roll-off rate is on this thing. If we then look at the phase, right, we start at a low frequency. The circuit is basically capacitive. It's entirely capacitive, you know, seriously. You got an X sub C that's many, many, many times bigger than R. So when you compare the voltage across the capacitor to the voltage at the input, they're basically in phase. You're looking at zero degrees. But when we go up to um, a very high frequency, the circuit is essentially resistive. And of course, what we know about the capacitor is voltage can't change instantaneously. In other words, it's going to be lagging, hence the term lag network. And we would see the phase response kind of go like this. Without minus 90. And right at the critical frequency, you would see it halfway, you'd see it minus 45 degrees. Now we can make simple approximations of these things, sort of straight line approximations, which, you know, they're not perfect, but they'll do. So we just say this is perfectly flat to FC, and then it just drops at this rate. Instead of there actually being a little curve in here, and seeing it minus three, we minus three. We just say, uh, look, it's flat, perfectly to FC, and then boom, it drops off at 20 dB per decade. Similar kind of thing with the phase. We just say it's flat, it drops, boom, goes to minus 90. And to a reasonable approximation, these corner frequencies are going to be 10 times FC up here, and 0.1 FC down here. Basically, a decade below the critical frequency, you're not seeing any phase shift. And a decade above the critical frequency, you're seeing all of the phase shift. You're at minus 90. Right? In reality, it's a nice smooth curve. In the text, there are lovely diagrams of these things that you can see much more accurately. But this gives you the basic idea. Now, if we look at um, the inverse of this, a lead network, we just swap... All right, lead versus lag, we just swap the positions of these passive components. Put cap over here and resistor over here. But you still look at this as V out. What ends up happening? Well, at really low frequencies, the cap opens up. It blocks any signal from getting to the output. So you see the inverse of this. You see a response that looks... Kind of like this. And I'll, I'll do the simplified version of this. So this is flat down to FC. And then, boom, it starts to drop off. Same rate, except it's positive. All right, 20 dB per decade or 6 dB per octave.
Now the phase response is sort of shifted because again, at very low frequency circuits, largely capacitive, but you're taking the signal across the resistor. So this appears to be leading, hence the name. And we would see that the phase response is essentially the same thing, but pushed up by 90 degrees. All right, so you're plus 90 over here. At FC, you're going to be at 45, and then 0. And again, your brakes are the same. 0.1 FC and 10 FC up here. All right, 45 at FC. So this is sort of a mirror image, right? Kind of flop it. This one, you just sort of shift it up and down by 90 degrees. Now, you want accurate values? These are just sketches, right? We can derive some equations, and there are some nice equations appropriately derived in the text. The gain, right? um, I'll do the lags first. For the lag is negative 10 times base 10 log of the quantity 1 plus f squared, where f is the frequency of interest, divided by the critical frequency squared. So you can just throw the value in here and, you know, get, see what you get, basically. Okay. The phase shift on this is equal to a negative 90 degrees plus the arctan. Oops. Clean that up a little bit. The arctan of fc over f. Right, so that describes uh, this curve right here. All right, that's your lags. And for your leads, we have very similar equations. The gain is a negative 10 log base 10 times the quantity 1 plus fc squared over f. So these frequencies are just flipped, right? Um, and then the phase essentially just doesn't have the minus 90 shift on it. So that's just arctan of fc over f. Okay? Now, the, the way we kind of combine all of this is in a real-world circuit, you have, you know, the amplifier's mid-band gain and phase shift. Maybe it inverts, maybe it doesn't. And then we have various lead and lag networks. We have to add those pieces together. So very quickly, if we were to look at a, maybe a little bipolar amplifier, uh, something like this, I'm not going to put any values in here, but just to kind of show something you should be familiar with. All right, so we got our power supplies, input signal, load, here's my bipolar. So this front end, this capacitor, and this Zn essentially creates a lead network. And we could figure out what that critical frequency is, 1 over 2 pi Fc, utilizing this capacitor and whatever that Zn happens to be, assuming this driving source impedance is small enough to ignore. Otherwise, you'd have to add it in. Same thing happens over here. This capacitor reacts with this load and this biasing resistor that becomes the total R, to figure out a critical frequency for this. There's also one down here for the bypass. This has three lead networks. It's possible to have circuits that have no lead networks. They have directly coupled amplifiers, so they have no lead networks. There's no lower frequency limit. They go all the way down to DC. On the high end, you know, this version, we have associated with the device and the resistors and just wiring, there are small little stray capacitances. For example, the base emitter capacitance here might be, you know, 10 picofarads or 100 picofarads or something like that. So that in association with the surrounding resistors, in this case, we would have, you know, the uh, source impedance back here. We'd have to thevenize the circuit, find out what the effective resistance is. Similar kind of thing out here. There'd be a little effective capacitance out here. The, Z, the CN, right, the capacitance into the next stage. And we could calculate, you know, a critical frequency for that kind of thing. 
all amplifiers have lag networks. All amplifiers don't necessarily have lead networks. Like I said, you could have direct coupled, but they have to have lag networks. If they didn't have lag networks, you could put light into this thing and you'd get more light out, you know, high enough frequency. They all have some kind of upper frequency limit. So what we wind up doing is something like this. We would say, well, I have an amplifier. It's mid-band gain. In other words, the kind of gain you would calculate ignoring the caps. You might say, oh, that's uh, 20 dB. And it's um, inverting, right? It's an inverting amplifier like the one I've drawn over here. Then you could calculate what these critical frequencies are. So maybe you have, uh, just to keep it simple, let's say you have one lag, right, at, um, just looking at my stuff over here, at 100K, and you have another lag sitting at 200K, and maybe you have uh, one lead, just one, um, at 1K, nice round numbers. I'm going to put all of these things together and see how you know, it kind of fits into this magnitude Bode plot. Then we can do the similar kind of thing for the phase. So here's what I would do. I would, I would um, identify what the dominant networks are. What do we mean by dominant networks? Well, those are the networks that affect the midband response first. So that would be the lowest of the lags and the highest of the leads. Well, I only have the one lead, so... There you go. In other words, we would say between these two things is the midband. So I'll just put a couple of little sketch marks here. One kilohertz is the lead. And then 100 kilohertz is that dominant lag. I'm also going to put something over here at 200 kilohertz for my other lag. But basically this span in here is what we've called the midband region. So what I would do is I would say, look, my gain is 20 dB, so I'm arbitrarily, I'm just going to say that's 20 dB over here, which would make that about 10. So between these two things, I'm just going to say the gain is flat. Now, below 1 kilohertz, the lead network kicks in. In other words, we get this. So this thing is dropping at the rate of 20 dB per decade or 6 dB per octave. So if I dropped an octave, right, 500 hertz, which would be, you know, around here, and I said, I'm going to drop 6 dB from where I was, 20, that would put me at 14, which is around here. So that's my little construction point. I get, get out my straight edge, and I'm just going to draw a straight line from one to the other, and that is the approximated low frequency response. In reality, we know it actually has a little bit of a curve to it, right? It's actually doing something like that, but that's our straight line approximation. Now, on the high end, I look at the 100K, the same thing, right? Go up an octave, drop 6 dB, or, you know, go up a decade and drop 20. The farther you go, the better your uh, sketch will be, but in this case, uh, this coincidentally just happens to hit the 200k, so I'll do the same thing, go out to 14 dB, right, I would connect these two dots, right, and then above 200k, we have two networks, so the first network is dropping at 6 dB per octave, the second network is dropping at 60, so in other words, 6 and 6, that's 12, so above 200k, the roll-off is at 12 dB per octave, or 40 dB per decade. So since we left off at 14, if I went up another octave, which would be 400 kilohertz, right, I would have to drop 12 from my 14, or I'd be at 2, right, somewhere right around here. So I'm going to draw a straight line from there to there. So you can see it just keeps getting steeper and steeper and steeper and steeper. Right? The more networks we have, the steeper it gets. So if... I had another lead network at, you know, uh, 200 hertz or something like that. Down here would be 200 hertz. That would steepen up from 6 to 12. It would go something like that. And that's how you can very quickly sketch what the response of your 
circuit is. This turns out to be very important when we start looking at uh, uh, negative feedback, because if we're not careful about the gain in the phase, all kinds of ugly things can happen with our op amps. So this is the gain part of it. We would do the same kind of thing with the phase. In other words, you identify the individual networks. We just say, hey, the mid-band phase is, in this case, 180 degrees, negative 180 degrees, because it's inverted. So I would do the same kind of thing. And then I would identify my critical frequencies, the 100K, 200K, 1K. And I know my phase shifts mostly come within a decade up and down, right? So just to look at some of the extremes, okay? Um, you can count up the number of networks you have to figure out what the extreme roll-off rate is or what the extreme phase shift is. Two lags, 6 dB per octave each, so you know ultimately it's going at 12 dB per octave or 40 dB per decade. There's only one lead, so ultimately it's going to fall at 6 dB per octave, 20 dB per decade. On the phase end, if we went to a really low frequency, we have the minus 180 because it's inversion, inverting. Now, on the, on the two lags, there's no phase shift at really low frequencies. But the lead gives us plus 90. So at some really low frequency, we've got minus 180 for the inversion, 0 and 0 for the two lags, and then plus 90 for the lead. So that would lead us way down here at minus 90 degrees. How far down? Well, about a decade below this. In other words, about 100 hertz. Right? Because, like I said, all of the change is happening within about a decade up or down from the critical frequency. So that's 1 kilohertz. Decade down is 100 hertz. We'll have nearly the full 90 degrees down there. Right? So it goes from minus 90, then it works its way to minus 180 in the mid-band, and then the lags start kicking in. If I go to a high enough frequency, right, these things start kicking in. We get minus 90 each. Of course, at that point, there is no contribution anymore from the lead network, right, if we're high enough up. So we get minus 180, minus 90, minus 90, way up here somewhere, we'll be looking at minus 360. And that would be, like I said, a, about a decade above the highest lag network. In other words, around 2 megahertz. Okay? So up around 2 megahertz, we're looking at minus 360. Hey, you know what? Minus 360 means you're back in phase. That's a full revolution. So as I said, that has very important implications when we start looking at the application of negative feedback. Okay, so there's a quick overview of Bode plots. As I said, in the text... There are much nicer looking diagrams in full color and appropriate derivations of these equations. Okay, have fun.